Moving on to the next stage, flooring. If there's one thing I'm quite comfortable with, it's change. And that's a good thing because nowadays, despite having pretty much chained myself to this land here, every day is different. There's no more getting on a tube in the mornings and going to work and being there all day in the same building behind a computer. I decided I wanted change so much that I changed everything. It wasn't the original plan, my plan was to buy a small flat in London and do it up. But then you come to the conclusion that many friends came to as well, that London is pricey. And to get away from house shares and housemates and find your own place, you're often faced with the reality of leaving. So I left and I didn't just leave London, I took the down payment I'd saved up to buy a London flat and bought a whole house on a small plot of land, mortgage-free, in Sweden. So, in order to lay the new floor, I need to take this door off its hinges. Which is going to be interesting um, because these hinges need to be, well, basically you need to just lift the door by about uh, two and a half inches. Uh, so yeah, and it's just me. So let's see if it works out, otherwise I can do the floor in half the room. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. It does lift. Of course, this doing up the flat idea turned into a big renovation and two years later I'm still here, still adjusting every day to whatever needs to happen next, whatever job takes priority. And these days it's work on my future study. The room in which I will work, eat, spread out all my fabrics and sew my own clothes, which is probably my favourite pastime, not just because I enjoy sewing, but also because I'm working on a tight budget, so going out to buy clothing doesn't really rank first when it comes to what I want to spend my money on. Good. How do I get you off? Okay, I'm gonna turn you off because you're sort of stressing me out. I did it. Okay. Happy days. You look so small. It's a tiny door. Now, I can actually do the floor build up that I need to do. And this door is going to be reused in the new design, but I'm going to cut it up a little bit. Because I like the original door. They don't really work anymore, but I like the original door and up, so I'm going to keep those because they're cute. Okay, so this cog and the outdoor seal which I put within the gaps here, it said that once the outdoor seal is no longer tacky, you can paint over it. It's been about a week and it's still tacky, so um, that's why, well that's one of the reasons why I haven't painted the ceiling yet. Plus I don't have enough paint. I went to buy paint and then alongside paint I bought all of these other things and then I forgot to buy the paint. So I don't have enough paint. But it's all good because clearly it needs to dry anyways. 
So we're just going to do the floor now, which is great. Flooring. I've had these floorboards for about a year and a half now. So I thought they were going to go in a year and a half ago. And now they're finally going in. Finally getting to the point of doing this floor. This has been fixed with like a thousand nails. That's like nails every 10 centimeter. It's insane. So this room is going to be clad the same way I did my kitchen. I really want this to feel like a cozy but minimal cabin. Something warm but simple. I've been using this pine tongue and groove throughout on the floors but also the walls. And this is a B grade timber but pretty affordable compared to other options. I've just finished cleaning up the ceiling and the windows so the floor is next. Okay, I'm pretty confused because I... I did a layout for this floor like a year and a half ago when I when I first got the floorboards because I cut them to size because they were so long and my notes are very confusing and I also did a cat drawing and I'm just not quite sure which correlates to which. I gave them all numbers and my numbers don't relate back to my drawings so I thought I'd done it really well and planned everything detailed but I'm not quite sure what, what I need so anyways I'm gonna go into that timber room and try and grab the timber I need for this room because everything I own is now in here yes okay so I'm sure I wrote this down somewhere maybe I just don't have the piece of paper anymore. So despite the mess now, I was very organized. So I did all of this. I have all of these lengths. 2A and a length. 5A. Ow. Ow. 1B and more over here. But I'm just not quite sure which length goes in which room so i think i figured it out the information is there it's in my notes i just didn't know how to read it <laughs> so i'm gonna grab the timber and figure it out all right let's make this floor happen i do not recommend stacking a lot of timber in the middle of a room I mean, unless you really have to, like me. It's not ideal. Try and avoid it. This is a lot. 
I'm going to make sense of this. Figured it all out. All of this is going into the room. That's a lot of timber for such a tiny room. When I first put the floor in the kitchen it made such a huge difference. New flooring really transforms a space and once the floor is in I can start with the built-in furniture so it's it's an exciting step. I got the timber for it a long time ago and it's been roughly cut to size already. It's just been waiting to be used. I'm going to make sure to clean all of the timber really well though. The first winter I worked on the flooring in the back room which was actually rotting because of a leak in the roof and it needed to be replaced completely so this meant that I was living with a giant hole in the floor and I had mice running around the back rooms including the room that stored all of this timber. So everything from that time that still lives in that room is going to get a really good wash before I actually use it. be good for all the seeds I planted. I don't usually check the weather forecast but it's good I did yesterday because I woke up to this rain. I managed to put everything inside last night. Put plastic on all the timber that was lying outside. So nice and quiet. I feel like I'm on a holiday. See, these are looking quite perky. Not all of them are happy, but something is happening here. Look at these. these. Oh. I planted carrots around the edges. They're all coming out. A few months ago I made this top and I have a bit of fabric left over so I'm going to use that to make some shorts, some matching shorts. So I've got a matching set, like a little holiday, a holiday set. <laughs> so I'm using block patterns, I'm basically using the biggest size and I'm making it a little bit bigger so it flares out a little bit so I'm going to try and make a pattern. Essentially I've taken the largest block pattern and taken out all the curves around the hips I'm giving the pattern extra space and I'm flaring it at the bottom so that I can add a simple elasticated band at the top. 
front pattern, back pattern. I want to taper out the legs a little bit, so I'm going to cut both up in the middle and just change the pattern so it it fans. I don't know whether it's going to look good, but we're going to do it anyways. Okay, I'm going to add a small amount of space in the waist as well because I'm going to put in an elasticated waist. So I've got a bit more fabric to play with. And another five centimeters at the bottom. And I'm going to do that on the other side as well. I did make this little sample. So I think I'm gonna try it on and see. See if it looks all right. So I flared this side, but not that side. I don't even know if I like the flare, but isn't this the perfect outfit for like a Southern European city trip? The south of France, Italy or Greece. I mean, that's not really the holiday that I'm planning, but it would be the perfect outfit. I am actually planning a hike, but I can't quite decide when or where or how. I even got a book. I don't usually get a book. So I've been looking at flights and then I get really paranoid about the prices going up for the flights when I look all the time. Because I've realized that flying from Sweden is a lot more expensive than flying from London. But I realized I can save you from that same trouble. I have some useful tips using NordVPN. Yes, NordVPN is sponsoring today's video. They are going to save us all from ourselves. That's a lie. But I do have some good tips for making sure that you can keep on looking at flights and not get a price increase. Because flight increases do happen when you change the same flight numerous times because those websites check your GPS location, IP address, cookies and all of that. So here's my tip to make sure that that doesn't happen, or better yet, to possibly get a better price. So first you disconnect to the NordVPN server, change your location, which will hide everything you do. Then you check your flight prices, note them down, and after that you clear your cookies. And then you do it again, but you change your location to another country. So this is the thing. Sometimes airlines will actually give lower prices to people from the airline's home country. And sometimes people in wealthier countries are quoted higher prices because they can afford it more. So try and change your location to the airline's home country to a less wealthy country and also to the destination country and see the different prices that you get quoted. You might be able to get a much better deal. And of course you can also keep looking for days on end without worrying about the price increasing. So I'm going to do this for my trip once I know my plans and in the meantime you can get your annoyed VPN with a bonus month alongside your two-year subscription using my promo code WildRosy. And that was annoyed VPN. And I'm gonna finish my little my little holiday outfit now. Oh my gosh, I am really struggling to place this <laughs> on the right axis. It fits if I do it like this, but that way the stripes aren't really going in the correct direction. It will look really odd when I'm wearing it, so I need to move it a bit, but it means I have less fabric. I couldn't find a way to fit the pattern and I didn't want to make it less oversized so I cut off a slither of the pattern that didn't fit and cut it out of some leftover fabric. So now I'm just attaching that to the back panel of the shorts. I really wanted to add pockets but I just don't have enough fabric so the shorts are going to be very basic and it's turning out to be a really simple job to sew together actually.
so I figured out a little workstation for myself because I'm cleaning and sanding all of this timber and that's quite a lot so this is where I clean then first couple of boards will dry either here or here and once they're dry I take them to my little work table <laughs> around the corner here and I sand them and once they're sanded they're gonna they're gonna go back to the back of this table and once I have my stain and wood box well I have no idea how I'm gonna do that I don't know how I'm going to dry lots of planks at once but I'll figure it out this is what I'm doing today
I always think that just putting this timber in should be so simple, but the task of cleaning, sanding, staining, staining again, and ultimately cutting it to size always takes numerous days. I just received my stain in the post. I really struggled to find a good colour and the best option just turned out to be a lightly stained wood colour. I didn't want it to be whitewashed as a lot of typical Scandinavian interiors are and I also didn't want anything too dark. So I ended up with a bit of an odd mixture of transparent white and coloured wood wax. <laughs> Um, and I'm just, I'm just going with it now. The back rooms are all stained the same and it creates a warm feeling which I do really like so I'm continuing with it. First I stain it with a light colour and after that, in the evening when all the insects started biting, I added another protective layer to make it suitable for the floor. I was running back and forth like a crazy person by now trying to avoid the tiny Swedish midges so I will leave the laying of the floor for next week.